Eu, eu no caso, não, não tô vendo nada. Eu tô vendo aqui o Zoom e o Instagram, já beleza? Tá, já tá indo, cara. Já tá rolando. It's already, it's already rolling. It's, we're, we're, already, we're already live. Now we're, we're already live, okay? Nice, nice. Brilliant. Let's just get it all fixed up. We're doing this live uh, on YouTube and Instagram. It's the first time for us, right? We're just getting a few details, right? Yeah, that's it. Soon we're gonna be we're gonna be rolling with this with this live. I'm just get I'm just gonna get the Instagram rolling here. All right. Okay, checking connection, and we're live. Now let's just wait for Gennaro to come in, into Instagram. How's it going, everybody? Wolfbird, Homestead, Lofty Villas, welcome to our chat. We're just finished setting up Instagram so, and we're... Everyone cool? Everyone cool? Yeah, guys. In the meantime, in the meantime, smash that like button. Don't forget to do that ever. Okay, we have some people joining Instagram. So about the Instagram. Um, I'm just waiting for you to join. Yeah, sorry, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not on the page there. Uh, just the just click on Diego Forge Academy Stories. Is there an in you show invite up that or we're live? All right, cool. All right, guys, hang on tight. We're almost starting for real. All right, ah, so here go. we're in. Yeah. Sit to the Jays. Go live with Sit to the Jays. Maybe the people, you know, they give us an okay. Is everything going on? Instagram crew, is the audio okay? All right, guys, we're ready. So let's just check everything. All right, guys. People in Instagram. We're ready, so let's just check everything. What's happening, Felipe? It looks like we're, 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 we're all, okay, all set. New milestone for us where we're doing Instagram and YouTube at the same time, you know, getting everyone together. That's cool. Yeah, I'm trying to get the, the audio off my Instagram. For some reason, I cannot. How's that possible? I, I just turned the volume down on, on the phone. Yeah, so did I, but... but I can still hear you. <laughs> That's awkward. All right, we're gonna roll like that. Yeah, I'm gonna... All right, welcome everybody. We've got uh, some people here in. Uh... Oh yeah, Wolfbird Homestead saying he's having some echoes. Um, we hope that doesn't 
go on for a long time. And we managed to fix that. Uh, let's get right into our topic today. We're going to be, we had a, do you want to talk about that question now that, that actually kind of sparked up the, the idea for today's yeah. topic? So, I mean, it's, it's quite spontaneous. We just came up with this live uh, out of the blue and last minute things. Uh, you know, we, you know, we had a question, we, we try and interact with the people on Instagram and we asked everyone, you know, what's stopping you from applying agroforestry principles in your food production uh, systems? Or even what's stopping you from producing whatsoever? Uh, we've got a really cool answer there, which, you know, so many of you can relate to, I'm sure. Uh, you know, and uh, it's basically, the question we got back was, you know, I love the principles, I love it all, but how do you start from scratch? You know, I have a 3000 meter, meter square plot of land, but you know, how do you start from scratch? You know, really, what, what would be the first stage? So, you know, talking to Felipe, so many of us have been through that. So many of you are in that stage now. Maybe, you know, you've got your land uh, and you know, what are the steps? You know, it seems a bit scary to, to start, you know, you've been looking into it. Um, so, I mean, it's not so much uh, the principles we're going to be discussing in this, in this, in this live, uh, call it live or a webinar, not talking about so much, so much the principles and, uh, you know, techniques and things like that. We're talking more about, you know, to encourage you you know, what are the steps you need to take? What are the things you need to understand? And it's really going to be quite similar if it's, you know, agroforestry or, you know, conventional organic farming or any other type of agriculture. These, what we're going to be talking about is really how to, how to you know, really get off to, to you know, start producing and start planting. Um, so, I mean, uh, as much as, you know, some of you guys that are a little bit more advanced in that, uh, just bear with us, you know, because we know there's a lot of people that are trying to get off, you know, from, from the blank page. Um, so, so, so that was the idea behind today. You want to yeah. add anything to Felipe? How, what, you know? Yeah, I, I, actually, I actually want to ask people in YouTube, are you guys hearing some echo still? Because uh, somehow... You know, we're, try we're trying to do this in Instagram and YouTube at the same time, like you know, I said, somehow I cannot eliminate the, the, the sound from my mobile for some reason. Anyway, I hope it's not too bad. But yeah, if actually is, we had another let us question, know. You know, which was pretty interesting, uh, which was, you know, how, how do, you know, what, what makes us interested in agroforestry? And I think that's the, that, that ends up being the, the driving Force, right? You know, our, our love, our passion for, for agroforestry to, to keep on doing it. And the interesting thing about agroforestry, and it's something that, that Ernest Goetz says a lot, you know, about how the, the most important input you need to have is knowledge, right? In order for you to, to practice uh, agroforestry. And so, you know, when it comes to, you know, how, how do you start, you know, when, when you, you have no experience, it, it can be kind of overwhelming when you, when you, you know, first hear about the principles and all of these companion planting and stratification of species, succession of species. And, you know, suddenly you, you're maybe you, even if you have experience as a gardener, you're used to doing like a, a garden bed with, you know, one or two species. And suddenly we're talking about, hey, you know, you, we should be planting seven 10, 20, 50 species at the same time, you know, in the same day, at the same moment. And I understand this can be quite overwhelming for, for a lot of people, but it's important to understand that, you know, everything has a, has a purpose, right? It has a reason to be the way we do things. And it's really important that you get out there and experiment. You know, you need to get out there and, and try stuff out and see how plants respond to the way you're working with them. This is the most important thing. It is for you to observe how plants interact and for you to take risks. You know, I, I, I'm always trying to, to go one step beyond what I've already done, you know, trying to plant things 
in a more dense manner, try to mix up more species to really give myself some challenges and see how plants are going to respond. And then it's a, it's a matter of calibration. So, so really when you're starting out, it's, I think this is the most important thing. You need to experiment. You need to try stuff out. There is that learning curve, you know, in the, maybe in the first month, first year, it's a learning cur curve that's going to, uh, uh, accompany you throughout the rest of your life, of course, because we're always learning more. But when you're starting out, you know, those first years, first couple of years, it's really about trying stuff out, observing, and of course, trying to consume as much knowledge as you can, you know, from our videos on YouTube, and there's a bunch of other people who, who have amazing videos as well. So you need, you know, need to focus, get out there and try stuff out, just start planting. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know what I think is really interesting as well? If you, if you start into, you know, the whole agriculture thing and, you, you know, you, you, haven't, you haven't yet put a seed in the ground because there's a lot of us, we were at that stage at one point where, you know, I haven't, you know, even planted anything. So, but, you know, I'm really interested. I've seen the videos and things like that. You know, I really, we really advise people, learn how to plant your vegetables as well. You know, maybe, you know, I've been thinking about this, Felipe. Um, maybe the person is not fit for a full-on vegetable production, intense system with the market, lifestyle and everything. But, you know, it's so important for you to know how to, how to plant your maize. So it's so important for you to know how to plant and harvest tomatoes and understand a little bit about the veg, you know, because... Whatever you're gonna produce, you're always gonna, you know, want to have your veg or in, in your house or anything like that. Don't you think? I think whatever happens, I mean, I think it's a real important learning curve, uh, regardless of what your market situation is or what your intention is, kind of scale. I think everyone should go through that process, you know, of knowing how to harvest, you know, and how to plant and understand, you know, simple things. Of, of different species, you know, sweet potatoes and tomatoes and maize and beans, you know, and courgettes and things like that. You know, so I really encourage you, you know, to play around with that, even if it's not your plan, your long-term goal, your kind of, uh, you know, where you're seeing the opportunity for the market in, in your region. So we really encourage you, you know, agroforestry, we always, you know, introduce uh, initial crops, right? The placenta crops, the, you know, crops in the initial stage of the forest where we're able, you know, when the sunlight's all coming in, we're able to plant the veg, you know, in consortium with the forest, regardless of the system. Um, but so do do that, do do that. Um, you know, in, in many cases, when you, you're talking about a larger scale system, you might go in and plant a lot of service crops, you know, uh, to fill in those gaps. And, you know, that was good feedback and that might be, you know, the wisest thing to do. But uh, if you're starting out, I would like to encourage you, you know, to, to learn how to plant your basic crops. That's got to go a long way, you know, forever. You've got to, you know, that as, as a lifetime worth of knowledge that you, you, you will be gaining. So talking about how to start from scratch, um, you know, I will encourage you to consider, you know, like a, introducing veg within your system, regardless of the system you're drawing out. You, you think that's fair, Felipe? Yeah, I mean, I think people should always plant as much of what they eat as they can, right? So, it, you know, it starts with planting your own food. I think that's one of the things that, that actually move a lot of people to, to agroforestry and to organic farming, right? Um, you know, of course, some people, they, they will go into the commercial side of things. And, but I think that's, a, for most people, that's, that's a step further down the line. Unless it's, we're talking about uh, like professional farmers, you know, experienced farmers. These of course might just, you know, go straight into an agroforestry in a commercial way. But for people starting out, it, it really starts with your own garden, right? With trying stuff out in your garden and to, you know, to eat quality food. That's one of the first things we, we we want, right, to have quality food for ourselves, for the family, and, you know, to have some, some extra to, to sell, to share with neighbors, to share with family. I think that's the main so idea. Felipe, 
what can we say to people about, you know, when they're not sure what kind of system they're going with, they're not sure, uh, you know, what kind of scale they need to, to be doing with each uh, individual systems. People are trying to make up their minds, you know, I think we, we should talk a little bit, you know, making people aware of the lifestyle that they, they're going to choose. What do you think about, you know, we're taking that route, talk about a little bit about that, you know, people deciding the system, you know, before we, we talk about, you know, how to practically go ahead and take your first steps and, and to start from scratch the agricultural side. First of all, we need to understand a little bit about our options, right? Yeah, I think it's, 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 it's wise to... To, to understand the scale of things and exactly this that we were talking about, right? It's one thing when you're doing, you know, you have your garden, you're, you you're, and your family are working on, your, on the garden, you're trying to have as much diversity as you want. And it's another thing when you, when you try to make a living off it, because then you, you need to have a whole, the whole kind of business mindset, the entrepreneur mindset. And yeah, I, I, I understand what you're saying. I think a lot of people, they kind of get lost in that jump because there are many people who, you know, they come from backgrounds completely unrelated to agriculture and they dream of moving to the land and, and eventually supporting them, themselves, you know, off the land, making their living off the land. And... But very often they, they, they don't quite understand, you know, the, the scale of things that you need and the kind of lifestyle that that's going to develop. Because I know it's, it's a very romantic idea to, you know, go to the land and you're going to raise your animals and you're going to plant your vegetables and your fruit and everything. And it's going to be beautiful and you're going to sell to the market and all that. But like any business, you're going to you're going to stumble, you know, into a bunch of, of challenges and obstacles. So. I actually remember a, a friend of mine once when I was starting out, actually he's more of a teacher. Uh, I was starting out in agroforestry and, you know, back then I, I, used, I was a poker player, right? That's, that's what I did for a living when I started uh, studying agroforestry. And I remember him telling me, he said, look, you should not, you should not quit your current occupation and, and just move completely into agroforestry, you know? Exactly because of that, because, you know, once you depend on it for a living, uh, you have to make it work. And so if, if you can take the time, right, take one year, two years to kind of dive into agroforestry without having to make a living off it, all the better, because then you get the time to experience everything and to understand the minimum of the dynamics of the system, because just, just think about when we're working with, if you're, if you're doing, you know, I'm going to plant lettuce and then you just go there and you plant a field of lettuce in 35, 40 days, you have observed and, and experienced the whole of what the life of a lettuce will be, right? So you can get all of the experience needed in, you know, a few weeks. When you're working with agroforestry and necessarily you're going to have, you know, long lived trees in the system and there are going to be so many species and you're going to need to observe all of them and how they interact. And you need, you're going to need to spend some time to understand how all of these cycles are going to work throughout the year, all the pruning, taking down, thinning out of plants and everything. So this jump from like a home scale garden to a commercial system for those who want to have a commercial system. We always recommend starting with small plots, right? And having your, to have your lab. Every, every, every person who practices agroforestry needs their lab, okay? So like small plots that they can be experimenting. So I always recommend people, you know, start off with 100 square meters, start off with 150 square meters, 10 by 10. I remember my first agroforestry was in the garden of my father's house. It was 25 square meters, right? It was a five by five plot. It was pretty cool, great, great experience, you know, to understand everything. So it's, it's really important to understand all of the processes, all of the operations required so that you, you kind of grasp the idea of the operations of what your life's gonna look like right? before making a jump. Okay, I'm gonna make a living off this, right? 
Guys, let me take the opportunity. If you're watching this on Instagram, yeah, go to YouTube and you can keep watching it on Instagram, but go to YouTube and smash that like button for us. It's going to be a big help. Yeah. So, I mean, so now, you know, you, you got your head around it, you, you know, you've got your plot of land um, and, you know, you really got to see what kind of uh, lifestyle you want to have and, and your region as well, how it can absorb what, what you produce, right? Say, you know, who you're a homestead, but you might want to sell a little bit off, you know, in a market or anything like that, if, if that's the case. So, you know, these choices will, will have to happen where how could i say it you know with, with with the whole lifestyle thing you know and and the market local if you have um uh, you know an animal system that differs heavily drastically to a vegetable system right an animal system you know one person can look after so many animals you know quite a lot of large operation with two people you can, you can really, really large operation yeah, up to, uh, but with, with a, in a vegetable system, you know, one person it, it can do, you know, very, very little in comparison. So, but, but, you know, on the other hand, if you're in a small area, if you have a small plot, you know, you can have very high gains with, with a vegetable system and you, you know, you, you can't, uh, you can't, raise that many animals obviously with, with small small animals you, you could you know chickens and things like that but um you know but even then vegetable system is 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 the champion per meter square it's, it's at that end of, of the scale so you know you you would want to work work this out what kind of market how, how far your farm is to to a local your local you know urban centers you know, if, you, if you're really very far away, you'd want to, you know, maybe prepare something where you can ship it out, you know, every so often, you know, rather than, you know, being at, in the market, you know, with, with fresh produce every three days or anything like that. So there's many things to choose in that sense. But uh, I mean, what we will go on to say is that it's not that scary to actually go ahead and plant, you know, I mean, practically now, if you want to look at the practical aspects, it's, it's not that complicated, actually. You know, you need to source your goods, right? Um, you you, you want to talk about this, Felipe? How, you know, the practical aspects, the, the steps that will, I mean, some of the simple stuff that will, that will be, you know, that you need to simply do and get it going on, you know, and very quickly you can, you can be harvesting, harvesting veg and, Short cycle you, you talk, you, you're not, not talking necessarily about a, a full commercial scale system, right? Just, just starting yeah, out. Yeah, no, not necessarily. Yeah. yeah, just starting out, you know, starting out. Uh, you know, we, we, I mean, you know, we have tailed this to someone who's starting from scratch. So, you know, we're guessing as well, it's not going to be exactly uh, a large scale, you know, mega, you know, commercial enterprise, you know. Multi-millionaire but Someone that could be already... So yeah, I do. Um, Some people yeah, just I mean, need that first uh, step, and you know, just getting that soil prepared. Yeah, it's uh, you know, w when you start planting, it's you start by choosing, like we said, right, by choosing what you want to eat. That that's a pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty good start off. You know, just think of think about your, like, what you eat throughout a day. Just write it down, right? You're gonna you're gonna see you at least you know six, seven, eight species of plant. That's already a pretty nice start for an agroforestry system, right? So uh, you can already write down these plants and say, okay, hold, so I'm gonna make this uh, this uh, small system for these plants. And then, of course, we need to understand what plants need, you know, in order to start out to get all you know everything that you need to plant your, your first agroforestry, right? You're gonna need some trees, maybe some seedlings, some seeds. You gotta, you know, kind of source these things. You're gonna need some fertilizer, probably some tools, you know, to prepare the soil. 
the operations are pretty pretty straightforward, you know, and you can start out by doing everything manually. Of course, people always dream about having all the machinery and all that, but, you know, every, everybody starts off with just a, a hoe, um, one of those big forks, a pile of of organic matter that we got from you got from the neighbor because the neighbor was kind of scraping the leaves off his yard and like every good uh, agroforestry beginner you should be getting the leaves from the whole neighborhood you know grass clippings everything I I I, I cannot count the times I I was driving around with a small pickup truck in the city carrying logs of wood that people were throwing away you know getting bags of, of garbage which were filled with dry leaves and all that so this is a uh, well, like that brings me back so many about, memories yeah of course it's all about observing <laughs> what is being um how do you i forgot the word in english what's being wasted there, there are resources being wasted all around and agroforestry is nothing more than then learning to optimize the use of resources, right? This is the, the first principle that we talk about in our course in, that we have here available in the YouTube channel, our optimization of resources and energy. Like people are throwing stuff away, they're throwing resources away. You know, we can bring that to the, to the table, you know, to our table. Literally, we can bring that to our table. You can literally bring bags full of dry leaves to your table, right? Because you're gonna turn that into food and then the food's going to our table. So, you know, kind of sourcing all the materials, you know, what you need, you need tools, you need your hands, you need some manure and some seeds and seedlings. And, and then just get it going to, to, to plant those things. And of course, you know, uh, Wolf Bird Homestead here, he, he's that talking about, um, he, he wants to turn some, you know, plots, of empty plots inside a city into some, some sort of food forest garden. And he's saying it, it would be nice to have a, a bit of a sketch, right? Like a, an initial sketch for plantings and all that. And that we, that's a lot of what we do because you're gonna need that as well. You know, it's no use having everything if you don't have at least a minimal idea of how you're gonna combine all the plants, right? You can prepare your soil, you can manure it. And then you need to figure out, okay, how I'm going to organize the plants into that system, right? This is part of the organization of the optimization of resources, right? We want to have plants organized in a way that will make my life easier, that will uh, make the life plants, the, the plant life better, you know, so things won't be too clogged up, but I want to have everything nicely covered with plants. So I want to have a dense stand of planting, but not too dense that it's gonna be hard to work in it, that plants are gonna kind of uh, bother each other. So having, you know, sketches of plants, having of, of plantings, have some idea of consortium, uh, that's really good. And of course, we've got lots of things going on in, in the YouTube channel, you know, lots of videos about all the different systems. Uh, there's the, the full course that we have that we'll talk about uh, different types of systems. But I think these are basic, basically the things why you need to kind of open up your head to see resources being, being, wasted this is a, a very important input for 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 your agroforestry system tomorrow for example i'm going to be bringing a, a bunch of bags with uh, filled with uh, with kind of wood wood chips uh from the from the wood shop because they're kind of throwing it away and selling it for for free basically and so you know open up your head to that and try to get the minimum knowledge to start doing at least some sort of combinations with plant. And there's lots of stuff out there on the internet in our channel in other places that can help you out with these, uh, with these drawings, right? With how you're gonna combine all the plants. Isn't it? Yeah, you know, oh man, you brought back so, you brought back so many memories when we talk about, you know, everyone, every decent beginner, you know, you're there, collecting all that organic matter. And like, when you hear that your friend's pruning his tree, you're like, hold on, I want that wood. You know, you want to bring all that richness. And that really is a cool way to start, you know, cause you know, you see the worth as well of, of, you know, of collecting this and the kind of labor that takes as well. And then, you know, when I think when you scale up and then you, you've got to do some maths then you've got to try find efficient ways. And then you see, you know, a 
truck full is you know it's easier than many little trolleys but uh it, it is it is a way the way to go in, uh you know while you're starting and everything and, and look around you and observe and then you can appreciate even more when you start planting with service crops and you start producing the organic material on the spot because this is this is for me is so passionate i'm so passionate about producing my organic matter on the spot like consortium you know my main crops with organic matter producers you know on that vegetable bed on that tree bed and things like that you know like um I find yeah. it so um let, let me just make a comment here wolfbird homestead he said he's in the city of trees and the arbors paid to dump their wood chipping that's the dream that's our dream man uh, i live in a town where we don't even have wood chipping so I have to get it in the nearby town because here the, the it's, a, it's a very small town uh, in Brazil and there's no there's no you know people just prune everything and just send it to the to the to the dumpster pile outside the city. Uh, so it, it is a dream that of of uh, you know having somebody uh, being having to take. Uh, you know the wood chips and dump into into a specific place and you know you could be that place you can get that for free that's pretty it's very pretty great it's very classic when you're nearby an urban center you know you know the council tends to do some a level of pruning you know you know those trees that are going to touch all the electricity wires and you know pruning in you know um, public areas so you know councils do tend to prune and then for them to ship this off, they need to shred it because it's, you know, the volume, you know, in the truck, once you shred it, you can, you know, be out in the field doing a lot more pruning. And then, you know, they're left with all this chippings. And then, you know, in certain cases, they don't know what to do with it. In, you know, first world countries, they'll pay you to have it. Out here in Brazil, they just dump it anywhere and they just, it goes to real, real bad, bad use. Uh, even the bureaucracy to, to, to be in touch with the council out here in Brazil sometimes can be complicated where they, oh, I'm not allowed to sell it to you because the accountant this and the accountant that, and you end up having to do things on the side. It's like, it's, it's so crazy. And then, you know, but anyway, then you discover that you, sometimes you, you, you get the guy's phone number, the driver, and you're like, listen, just dump it at my house. I'll give you, you know, your a hundred bucks or whatever, or a couple of hundred bucks, dump it at my house. Uh, so that yeah. becomes like, you know, a goal contact that's worth gold that contact there and 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 then what 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 happens is you know your, your mates get hold of that contact and the next thing you know you know you need five six trucks for your for your couple hectare plots and you can't get hold of it so what i'm trying to get with all of this is that first stage bringing in everything you can locally with your own hands you know cutting all your grasses around and your neighbors bringing it in trolleys and then you you know move on to, you know, sourcing, you know, people who deliver, you know, councils and other people that, you know, that, that maybe have, you know, those, those shops that they process, those warehouses that process uh, wood and that, sorry, in English, I don't know the name. And then, you know, you're getting your wood chips, you've sourced out, it's coming in by trucks. But for me, the next level after you've been doing that for a long time is understanding, you know, uh, being passionate about working with service crops. And actually, you know, planting on the spot, because this for me is the most economically viable. You know, the seed is by far cheaper than even if you can, even if you're getting paid for to receive this organic matter for a while, if I'm getting paid for it, I'm sure that, that that's pretty, that's pretty cool. But, you know, you're still having to carry that. You still have to transport that from, you know, where this truck was able to, you know, sometimes it's not able to go into the field and put it right next to your beds. So you still have to transport this with little wheeler trolley things, you know what I'm saying? And, and once you're actually planting your, your organic matter on the spot, you know, for me, that's the breakthrough. Um, so, so yeah, so, but, but do follow the stages, you know, because you're going to need to source uh, organic matter wood shippings at one point, you know, for certain projects, you need to have your contacts with that. You need to have that well developed. And if you're lucky enough, you know, you can get it for, for uh, almost nothing because it is a problem. You know, it is a situation where the council has a problem. They don't know where to put this material uh, unless they've learned how to plant 
ecologically correct. And then you see them. It's lovely when you go into a city and you can see all the wood chippings, like in the parks, covering the soil by the plants. I've seen that before and, and it's really nice to see. Um, so yeah, so source your organic matter or, you know, plant to plant it, you know, obviously initially it's nice to come in with some organic matter, uh, but, you know, plan to plant it so that you'll have it in the future. Very quick, you're going to be producing that on the spot, right? So that's the organic matter side of things. Uh, one should also look into seedlings and seeds, right? Once you've decided the kind of uh, drawing you're going with, the, the kind of fruit that, and, and veg that you, you'd like to produce. What do you think, Felipe? You know, one could go in and look, and look into the seeds and seedling, because then, you know, you want to know, you want to plan this. You want to know your seedling, your vegetable seedling. Ideally, you want to, you know, be ordering it for up to 40 days in advance. You know, it will vary from different vegetables and different times of the year. For me here, I order it 20 days when I need it in 20 days from now. So I've already, you know, I need to have a plan. So I ordered my vegetable seedlings. I won't have my vegetable seedlings and then, you know, source everything else. Have everything ready because 20 days is real quick. Next thing you know, you've got your seedlings, and then you're having to look after them and then they pass the, the, the premium time of, of plantation. So this is, you know, from scratch. And I love doing it, ordering it today. And I know I've got 20 days to have everything ready. It kind of gives you a date, right? If you're ordering, you know, 10 trays, you know, a couple of thousand of tomato seedlings, you've got a date. I need to be ready. In 20 days from now and that kind of sets you you know in a path where where you know anything that you need to finish up in, in terms of preparing the soil right and uh and and, and with with uh tree seedlings as well because sometimes you really sometimes you really got to source that um don't leave it to the last minute because you know you've made a project for you know 500 macadamia trees and so many hundred avocados but when you go looking around you, no one has got the 500 macadamia trees. You know, it's not that easy to, to, to find. I mean, this is the consortium I want. This is, this is the kind of produce I want to plant. But, it, you know, don't leave it to the last minute. You know, have all that prepared before you start moving into the soil and things like that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, let's just answer a few questions here while, while we, before they, they pass away. Um, K Love asked, guys, everybody on Instagram, I'm going to keep on repeating this because there's new people coming in. If you can, go to the YouTube channel. We're, we're live on YouTube as well. Even though if you can go there and smash the like button, you know, it's going to help with the algorithms and all. The best thing you can do to support us is to spread out the word. Um, K Love asked, what can I combine with lemongrass? I want to farm it in bulk. So that's pretty interesting. It's, uh, it's always great to have a to have grass as a main crop and lemongrass will grow very nicely in between the in between rows of trees right so you can have nice rows of trees with you know all of diverse rows of trees spaced apart every four or six meters or so and just plant your lemongrass in the middle and you know in the act of planting it you can you can combine it with all sorts of annual plants like uh, like corn like like beans and uh, squash, whatever you want. And, but then you're gonna harvest these plants and then the field is gonna be then established with lime lemongrass um, stand. You should check out the, in our course, Agroforestry course module five, uh, we implement a grass system. It was implemented with Mombasa grass and elephant grass, was it? Or is it, was it only Mombasa in our, I remember. Yes. It was only Mombasa. Yeah, right? we had elephant grasses on, on the borders of the Mombasa. Yeah, so you can no, do we had pretty elephant much the same thing. Uh, but on the borders. Instead, yeah, yeah. Cool. Instead of the Mombasa and the elephant grass, you're just going to have the lemongrass. You can kind of uh, copy that model exactly and just substitute Mombasa and elephant grass for your lemongrass. Um, Wolfbert Homestead. You know, I love it. I he, he the consortium for Mediterranean we're, climate. We're, especially for the veg and tree stages. Some the banana can grow, but it's on the edge. Uh, you should check out the videos we have about, uh, we, we did a, a, we started a project in the Alentejo region in Portugal, that's Mediterranean climate. Uh, Alentejo. So we've got a few, a few regions. Uh, I mean, we've got a few videos. 
here in the YouTube channel, you should definitely check them out. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we couldn't go back there last year, which we, we would have, but it didn't happen. This, this year, we're not sure how things are going to go. The plan was to be there again in April, April but we're not sure it's going to work. But still, there's a few videos there uh, and you can check it out. And let me take the opportunity, since you're saying you could use a good list of consortium for Mediterranean climate. I know if you know, but we've got uh, a patron community. And inside the patron community, we were all, for every video that we do, basically we were sharing some extra material there with the patrons. So there's a, just a huge list of, of, uh, of videos there which have extra material. Some of that is exactly sketches of the systems that we design and you can download that and, and all of that. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. You should check it out. There is definitely a link somewhere around here in the video or in our other videos, but it's uh, www.patreon.com slash agroforestry academy, right? You can join us for like $7.90 and there's a ton of, of value there of, of lots of stuff that we're, we're sharing there. Um, there was a, there was a That's question. That's really cool because uh, there's, there's multiple, there's multiple level uh, of people there. You know, so there's some beginners, there's some professional agriculture and a lot of people are interacting behind the scenes there, and that's what really impressed me the most how everyone supports each other uh, but you know if you really if you if it's, you're, it's a situation where you know I want to plant but I need a little bit of guidance like some interaction with us one-on-one -on -one, you know through the patron you know there's the Q&A's there's uh, you know webinars and then there's even uh, an, an option where you can be a member where you actually have one-on-one -on -one live sessions with us and we can guide you through uh, you know either your professional or your initial stages of, yeah. of agriculture. Speaking you know, of whatever. which, this Saturday we're having uh, our monthly Q&A with the patrons. So right, every, it's usually on the third Saturday of the month, but January was a bit messed up. So we're doing it this Saturday. We're going to be live here on YouTube with all of our patrons. We're going to be answering a bunch of questions that they sent. So it's, a, it's pretty fun. You guys should, should come around too and check it out. And whenever there's time in the end of the session, we take some questions from people watching on YouTube. Um, let me just get a, I just a, a, I just a, a question from Byron. Sorry, sorry about that, man. He's asking Instagram, uh, just so it doesn't pass. You kind of touched on it a bit, but he was he's just asking, are you saying that you're importing organic materials for mulch initially? I just wanted to add that, yes, if whenever possible, man, whenever it's feasible, financially and logistically speaking, to to important material, always do it. Even, even when you're not implementing anymore, even if you're already kind of far ahead in the system, if it's cheap material, easy to get, easy to distribute, definitely do it. You know, eventually if, if systems are, you know, if you're doing large systems, it becomes kind of impossible. And then you, you have to, to work with, you know, quick green ground cover for, you know, for having the soil covered as soon as possible with live plants and then chopping them off to start covering the soil. Yeah, I just, sorry, man. I just like to give a special shout out to K-Love. And, you know, I've read her comment recently. She's been binge watching our videos. That's pretty cool. And you're like, you hope to get things going. So it's good to see that you've been thinking of a system, the lemongrass system. I just like to add a little comment onto that. We've got the fifth uh, module there, which we do plant uh, a grass system, but just, just, Keep this in mind, whenever you're introducing grass at the initial stage, you can always plant extra things with that grass, right? So, so make that count, you know, I love uh, planting onions with my, with my grass, grasses initially, you can plant carrots, you know, all sorts of things in line between grass lines and things like that. So uh, do experiment to plant your grass and plant things with the grass. And once you've harvested these first initial crops and then, you know, that grass will be ready to be established and take over the, the, the spot, right? But yeah, do, do go ahead and be brave enough to plant things with the grass as well. In, in the initial stage, you know, in that first sprout, grasses tend to be quite slow. They really take off after that first cut, you know, it's like baby's hair when you cut it and then it starts, you know, thickening out and really establishing. And then you get to an age where like Felipe, then we've got a little bit less hair. 
um, Lou, Lou Whitney is asking here in, um, in Instagram, uh, how do I find the information address again? For the, I, I, I imagine you're talking about the Patreon address. It's www.patreon.com slash agroforestry academy. Um, It'll be in our descriptions. You know, you know. What? What did you say, man? The, the Patreon uh, details will be, you know, in the description. Yeah, but yeah, in the YouTube the, video, but the Patreon address, in Instagram. Um, mm -hmm. Thomas P saying greetings from Sweden. Thanks for your channel. We're glad you like it. Finishing uni this summer and ready to take steps to create my homestead, have capital, but little experience and a lot of time. 35 years old, could see myself doing agriculture in northern climate, Mediterranean climate, tropics, or subtropics. No attachments at the moment. Any general guidance as to how to think and making my move right? Well, that's a very good question. And I think we can kind of, uh, you know, go back to what we mentioned before. You know, take the the opportunity of you know maybe if you can take up one two years to really focusing on learning and experiencing and experimenting and you know learning from other people um try to get as much hands-on experience as you can kind of understand what it means you know to to be working and trying to live off the land and of course this can be done online but I'd highly recommend that you try to do it uh, as much as you can in, in person as well. So, you know, if you're in Sweden, look up for, there, there, there are people doing agroforestry courses around Europe every now and then. Uh, we, whenever the pandemic's gone and we can travel again, we're probably going to be do, doing something in Portugal. So you should be in tune for that. But what I'd recommend now is try to get as much experience as you can, man. You know, drink our videos for breakfast and that's it man just and an experiment if you've got a small garden remember that you know you don't need a big piece of land to start with agroforestry to start experimenting so you know if you've got a piece of garden you know 100 square meters 50 square meters just start planting get your hands dirty and so that you you know start getting the minimum necessary experience to to then have confidence enough to make a move and actually start living off agriculture. And of course, man, uh, try to get help, try yeah. to get support, you know, jo join our community in Patreon. Again, there's, you know, exchange experience with people. Try to get as much uh, uh, in touch with people doing that sort of stuff as you can because that's that's key to success that's key to success you need to be in contact with people doing that if you think of it felipe so many of the people that are in the patreon with us are actually starting to produce now and the people that are having the one-on-one -on -one sessions we're actually guiding people complete amateur i see in, in in complete phase one and so, so one or two of them are actually going into like a medium to large uh systems already so you know, so we, we can guide you through it as well. The patient is quite powerful. Um, but, uh, you know, what I would say as well, uh, you know, if you're thinking to, to start your, your, your food production, another, another very important tip, be generous with your initial inputs. Be generous with the manure initially. We do plant systems that triggers enriching cycles right so that we will, will every year have better soil than the year before so you know what, what you need to put so much manure today tomorrow you need less and less and less each year and and eventually i personally myself i only put manure in my forestry systems in the first year so be generous with the manure initially all right obviously you need to have a soil analysis and you know it depends on, on what the case is but give it that nice kick start so that you can trigger that for real, so that you can see results. Because one of the learning curves is like planting, and then oh no, I didn't put enough manure, and then you've lost everything. You know, my teacher came to my house, and you know, he told me off about my maize. You know, the corn. He was like, 
that's so weak, man. Where's all the manure? You know, so I had to learn that way as well. And we see, we see, yo, what's up? What's happening in the house, Matthew Reese? Who? So be generous with your initial inputs, right? Be generous with your manure initially, at least, right? And then you can be sustainable. You can, you know, enriching processes from there. Um, yeah, try not to on fail that, of that input. On, on that topic, it's uh, this thing about, you know, the, the being generous with inputs. This is a very good point because it's, it's important to understand people that most of the plants that we eat, they're very demanding. Okay, it's, uh, they're very demanding plants. They come from what we call abundant systems, right? They're not just the regular plants. Just, can you imagine what it takes to produce a bunch of bananas? Can you imagine the type of energy that the plant needs to, to, to gather to produce that? You know, compare that with, you know, some dry fruit, some small little seeds that other plants types of plants produce you know compare the stuff we eat the amount of condensed energy that the plant needs to 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 come up with with wild plants you know this this happened through many years of selection so our plants are very demanding and nowadays we're mostly working in highly degraded land so it's uh it's it's mean to try to get our plants to grow in the sort of conditions that we have because it's completely not what they evolve to grow on. So that's why it's, you know, reinforcing what Gennaro was saying that, you know, be generous with, uh, with inputs, with manure, with all that. You know, you're in Sweden. I know Europe has uh, quite amazing soils all around, you know, in terms of, of mineral availability and all that and but still at least some manure it's really important to have uh in in the system you know to really start off kickstart that micro 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 life in the soil we need to we need to understand one of the things of agroforestry which is the opposite of what conventional agriculture does is that we're trying to create the perfect environment for the plant what conventional agriculture tries to do is to create the plant that will uh, uh, fit the degraded environment that we currently live in. So, you know, we need plants that are able to, to intake more pesticides and herbicides and all the sides because suddenly there are more pests, there are more diseases. So we need to apply more chemicals. So the plant needs to be able to take in more chemicals because nobody can withstand so much chemical. So they're always trying to you know, create, come up with the corn strand that, oh, this corn is able to take up more manu more fertilizers, more chemical fertilizers. And we, on the, the other hand, we're saying, no, we, we need to try to, to consider the system because it is a system, right? Our, our farm, our world, is, it's a system. So we need to consider that it's a system. There are other beings involved and which co-evolve with plants. So we really need to try to create that perfect environment for the plant. But then when you're trying to grow bananas, when you're trying to grow corn in very degraded soils, you really need to create that uh, simulated environment of abundance while you are working with life in the soil to improve conditions at a constant basis so that four, five, six years down the line, that corn that first needed a handful of manure for each little plant now produces without any manure. So, you know, we, we want to get to that stage, but we need to understand that plants are the ones that we work with are highly demanding. So. Yeah, and then, uh... You know, talking about, you know, starting from scratch, you know, and, you know, you're going to have to prepare your soil and then, you know, there's choices to make different soils. You, you, you could choose, you know, to, if you just want to get some, knock some trees out or some grass, you might not need to till everything, hoe everything down. You might want to just do local, you know, beds for, for your trees as well. That's one way, you know, just, just giving you ways, you that was sitting there that, you know, you want to start from scratch. You want to do, get up tomorrow, right? but you don't know. This is one way, 
Well, we see our, our, our video that was released this week. You know, we just had individual holes and planting tree seedlings and then planting, you know, veg around each, each tree. So, you know, that's one way. Or you could actually get into the whole movement of tilling, drawing out your, your vegetable beds, right? So these are choices, but it's not a mystery. It really isn't a mystery, right? Um, the step-by-steps are there in the videos. Uh, you know, like, like we said, we're here in the Patreon to give you a hand. But, you know, just, just be encouraged to go out there and get it going on. So many videos already. Uh, if, you, if you surf them, you find a way to start. Just be brave. Get it going on. Exactly. Don't forget to send us the photos on, on, in the group, right? Because we love to see it. In the Facebook group, we have one there. Exactly. And... Yeah, man, I, I, I would like to reinforce the idea, you know, try to get your hands on as much knowledge as you can. Uh, and I'm going to repeat the quote from our teacher, Ernest Goetsch. The, the most important input for this type of agriculture is knowledge. Right? We need to, to, to learn stuff. We need to, and, and, and it's not only learning, you know, by watching our videos, by, by watching other people's video, by studying, by going doing an agronomy course, it's by observing, right? I think this is the most important um, ability you need to have to observe plants because there is, we, we can communicate with them. You know, plants, they are constantly giving away signs that we can learn to read, you know, so suddenly that, those the more knowledge you acquire the more interaction you take with plants and then suddenly you see that those those um those dry branches in the middle of the of the of the of the canopy which maybe at one time you just thought it was normal and then suddenly you start seeing signs of a plant that are that's unhealthy you start you start observing different tones of green in the same plant and suddenly say, okay, this jackfruit is not as green as the other one I saw. So, you know, this, maybe there's something going on here. And then you start seeing differences in the size of leaves and the amount of leaves that a, a branch has. So plants are, they're just giving away information all the time. And we need to learn to pick up on that. That's why observing is so important. And there's so much you can do to, to so, so much you can learn just by observing and opening yourself to, to look at plants and, you know, try to see the patterns. So, yeah, I think that, that would be there's like nothing the like, most important tip. There's nothing like one year after the other, right? Just trying again next year. So be patient with agriculture. It is next year, but, you know, next year is just around the corner. And there's, you know, the next season is just around the corner as well. So, you know, you wait till next year to, to maybe to try this again, but you've got next season around the corner. So time as much as it, you have to respect time with agriculture, you know, it's just there, it's very quick, right? So, so time will go around. And uh, what, what is very interesting, you know, with your experience, with your climate, with your understanding, with your uh, understanding of the market, of, of your personal surroundings, uh, you will have a unique forest. You know, you will have a unique food production because you know, there's so many possibilities. The possibilities are so vast, you know, don't follow no recipe, you know, do produce, do have your, your input within the systems. You see, uh, this is it. Me, myself, you know, I, I wasn't so experienced at the time, but already, you know, I was, I was unique with, you know, grass production, you know, for animal feed, because, you know, people were telling me, you know, teachers of mine even telling me, you're crazy. This is going to swallow your, your, your forest. But I understood my situation. I understood what, what I wanted to produce. I, I wanted to make that grass, you know, coexist with the vegetable. So, you know, and, and this is the, the thing, you know, you want to produce what you know that's going to go well. Uh, but you also want to produce what you wish went well, right? So... Sometimes, you know, people are telling, you, no, this doesn't produce here, this doesn't produce there. That's because they're too used to uh, analyzing, you know, conventional or, or even a conventional organic, you know, uh, kind of guidelines. You know, I really, so, so do experiment, right? 
when you work with the laws of nature, you can get more out of, uh, out of your, out of your plants. So do plant what you would love to eat, plant what you know um, is going well, and plant what you would like to have gone well as well, you know, and then, and through experiments, you can figure out, you know, maybe if you prune it earlier or this, or if you plant it a little bit later, and it might take you one or two years or three years to understand that crop that wasn't so adapted, but then no, now you've, now you've clicked and then that's it. You've opened a whole niche in the market where only you're producing this off season things, you know, so experiment and, 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 and imprint your own characteristics, your own ideas in your food forest systems. So before we continue, if you haven't yet, smash the like button. If you're on in Instagram, now I'm looking at Instagram. Go to YouTube, please. Smash the like button. Then you can come back to Instagram. Um, on that note, we're rounding up one hour. I think we can kind of uh, summarize. And I'd like to summarize everything that we, we, we mentioned here because some people came, you know, they, they were late. Uh, they're going to, you can rewatch everything later. But uh, basically, you know, we, the, the, we wanted to answer the question, right? How do I start from square? scratch and I'm going to summarize it and then you can tell me if I think if I understood it right now so first thing uh, take notes on what you ate throughout the day second thing find a pile of dung it could be horse dung cow dung cat dung uh, I've, I've even done uh, jaguar dung believe me I've gotten jaguar dung to to my forest you know, find a pile of dung, get this, those scraped up leaves from your neighbor, bring that all to your, to your garden, get a hoe, the tool, get a hoe, um, put some manure there, dig up those, you know, those beds, find some seeds of that which you ate, which could even be from the things that you ate. You know, if you ate a tomato, you could use the seeds. You know, you don't have to eat the seeds, take them out. If you ate some lime, you know, use the, you save up some seeds, some papaya, whatever it is, save up seeds. Um, so, you know, prepare some beds, put some seeds there, grab some seedlings and, uh, and experiment and try to gain as much knowledge as you can. Uh, search the internet, take presential courses, uh, watch all, our, all of our 169 videos and join our patron community, interact with other people, check out some other YouTubers out there. Matthew Reese, are you still on, man? Check out what's ripening channel. He's got a great channel. He's up there in Florida doing some great work. Definitely got to recommend. It's what's ripening. That's his YouTube channel. Um, so, you know, check out there. There's loads of information around. Knowledge is the most important thing. So knowledge and experimentation and trying stuff out and a pile of dung. That's the recipe for success. Wouldn't you say, wouldn't you say, man? That's it, man. Two piles. <laughs> two piles of dung, right? It's, uh, I think it's better. Two piles. Yeah, of dung. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Be generous. Give conditions, you know, give conditions. Give conditions. Uh, Try avoid, try avoid getting into, you know, fighting with all, you know, like try to understand about the bugs, you know, and just welcome everyone. Just please initially, just, just please initially just welcome everyone and try to understand what is it you are doing wrong that is unbalancing the system, right? Please, 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 no pesticides, right? Let's not get into war with, with an unbalance of the nature because we have caused it or with something we haven't done correctly. All right. If you, if you observe that, you know, but I'm planting the, this crop, I'm planting it and I can't, you know, just don't plant that one anymore. Make do yourself a favor, choose something else to plant. If, you know, if the bugs, if you can't, you know, just adapt yourself, work with harmony. Just please don't get into war, man. <laughs> yeah, this, there's a, you know, Bill Mollison, he, I, I remember reading a quote when I was reading his book which I thought it, it really stuck in my head. He said, you know, it's more important to understand what we shouldn't do and not what we should do. Uh, you know, the reason for that is because nature is already 
working towards enrichment, right? That's its natural process. It's already working towards enrichment. Uh, it's very easy for us to get there and screw everything up because we're stupid. So it's important to understand what you should not do as well as what you, you know, what you should do. So like Janao said, you know, you, you don't want to take any actions that will directly uh, um, oppose the way of enriching and balancing out that already happened in nature. So that's really important. Everything we do needs to be focusing, focus in triggering processes, right? And a triggering process of life that will take an area of land and move it to a, a, a better moment in terms of, of quality of life for all the beings involved in quality of soil for everything, right? So I think this is important. And on that note, I think we can wrap it up and leave the invitation for Saturday, 3 p.m. GMT minus three. We're gonna be live here in YouTube. And then it's only YouTube. So you guys from Instagram, you're gonna to have to check out YouTube because we want you to go to our YouTube channel. This is, this is only a machination for you to go to the YouTube channel. Um, so we're gonna be live with our patrons answering their questions, which they send to us in advance. Whenever there's time, if you're watching in YouTube, you can post your questions in the chat. If there's time, we're gonna answer them. Uh, but of course we need to give priority to the patrons question. And you know, many of the questions, maybe are questions that you have as well. So it's always a, a, a nice chat, a nice discussion. So Saturday, 3 p.m. here in the AgroForest Academy YouTube channel. And on that note- it's cool. Yeah. We're, you guys come check out what's happening with the Patreon. We're doing the Q&A with them. And then you actually get to see them, the kind of people that are there with us, the kind of interaction that's happening. So, you know, this one event uh, every month, the Q&A, we, 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 we're making it live. So, you know, you can get to know what the vibe is in the inside there. Um, and, you know, with these people, we've got other things going on as well. And, uh, and there's the other tier as well. There's the other Patreon tier. We have the one-on-one. -on -one. And that's, you know, if you really want us to guide you through, you know, this important project in your life. Exactly. All right, guys. So right. Uh, we thank you for watching. On a technical a note here, on a technical what? note, the YouTube people are out. On a technical note, YouTube people are about one minute behind here. So we've got to watch out not to close everything off when we finish speaking, because I don't, you know? Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. All right, excuse so us let's on just, that. Let's just, uh, let's just keep silent for a minute. <laughs> See you guys. All soon, right, peace, right? guys. It's been a pleasure. Bye bye. Bye, care. Instagram. Till next time.